Hey there, Stamp Champ community. It's Spencer Willis here with a technique video. Today's video is really special and close to my heart. Uh, the reason for that is I was taught this by a good friend who has since passed away from ALS. Her name is Susie Miller, and she taught me this technique many, many years ago. She calls it burnishing, and it's a really fun and unique way of coloring a card instead of doing water coloring or other techniques. So the way that you do this is I'm taking our Bellflower stamp set and I'm inking it up. I'm using Memento. You can use any ink, black ink that you want. And so what I'm going to do is instead of stamping it in the, the center like I would if it was a focal point, this is going to be my background. So there's a, a beautiful crisp image showing the beautiful detail that this Bellflower stamp has. And this is the only stamp I'm going to use to create this background. And it's kind of like a puzzle or maybe a backwards Jenga where I am putting this all together. So I'm inking up again and the intent is Kind of work toward the center. I'm rotating as I go so that there's a free flow of the image and it looks more like a pattern and not so calculated. And essentially you just fill in all of the areas where there's not a stamp yet. I continue to ink it up. This time I'm going to get in the center Otherwise, oftentimes I end up with a big gap there. There we go. I think just one more. That's going to be the important thing, stampers. You've got to know when to stop. And I think this is going to be my last one here. Yep, so you just rotate it enough so it's not intersecting, getting in another stamp image's lane. Perfect. Okay. So yes, I made a little mistake and we'll see somehow where we can cover that up. So the next thing to do is to add color. I love to use finger sponge daubers. These are available at walmart.com, at Joanne, Amazon, so all sorts of places that you can find these. And I love them and when I think about them, they're kind of like olives for crafters. You know how kids will put olives on their fingers and kind of dance around. Just don't put this in your mouth. So what you're going to do is just put it on your, your uh, cardstock here. But it is, I think, a lot like olives for stampers. So I'm going to start with purple. And depending upon how juicy your ink pad is, you'll want to be careful and even test it before you start inking. So this is fairly evenly inked. Um, I'm just going to do a little bit of a tap. I'm a little nervous that it might be too much, so I'm going to dab it off. You know, it's a lot like um, cooking that I've taught my kids. I've told them when you're baking, you can always add time, but you can't take away time. Same thing here, crafters, is it's a lot harder to take away the ink than to add a little bit more. So that's why I am finding myself doing some stamping off and daubing off, I guess we could say. So what I'm doing is finding all of the petals. Now, on our website, we tell you all the colors that bellflowers actually come in. Um, my motto and philosophy is, okay, if you're a stamper, it's all about doing something in a creative way and colors really don't matter as much. We're just trying to make something pretty and bright in someone's day. So again, I'm just finding just those little bits of flowers. But the beauty of this technique is those of you that might be a little retentive and always making sure to not color outside the lines, well, this is now your chance. There, you're not gonna get this perfect no matter how hard you try with a sponge dauber. So I think I've got all of the blooms pretty much covered. So I can either wash this out or get my second olive here and actually use a green color to finish this up. Now, 
right here, this is probably a little too dark. So I'm going to try and come back and maybe lighten that a little bit. Maybe this is where my focal point goes so to cover up that little mistake. So again, I'm going to kind of daub off so I can see what level of intensity this ink pad has. And then I'm going to start rubbing, or as my friend Susie called it, burnishing. You're, you're really burning and rubbing the ink into the cardstock and creating this beautiful bloom effect around the image. So I mentioned this could be a background. It could be a focal point if you wish. Um, with the black, it tends to be a little stark. And I'll show you an example in a little bit where you don't have to always stamp the outline in black. I just continue to, to find little spaces to fill that in with my green and not being too concerned about going outside the lines. Um, part of that blooming effect is as you lose ink on that sponge where it just does this, this blur or this fading effect that I love so much. Okay, we are almost done with covering those leaves. I can show you what we're gonna do next. Now for a lot of people, this white space in here may be a little bit too stark for you. So I will go back in and just kind of blur or blend all in there just so it's a little bit less stark. And what I find happening is I started with white cardstock, but it almost takes on a cream background effect of the, the cardstock. So that is our background, but let me show you a finished project using those same colors and dress up a little bit. The stamp set does come with some really beautiful handwritten sentiments that you can use. This one says grateful for you and adding a few sequins and it's a great card that's ready to go. Now before you leave, I just want to show you a couple other color combinations. With stamping, color changes the personality and everything about a sample. So here I used some pink and a little bit more of a vibrant green, created that beautiful background. You'll notice again I went around the edges where there was white space and just added a little bit more green. Here is a little bit more subtle. This might be really appropriate for a sympathy card that's more subdued and toned down, but those bellflowers are just really subtle and delicate. Then the last one I wanted to show you, you don't always have to use black, I mentioned. So here is a coral color and I stamped the flower in that color and then returned with the very same coral to create the bloom effect and then used a lighter green around the sides. So the reason I showed you this one is this is what happens when you don't cover all of your bases, so to speak. What I should have done is taken this image and laid it long ways to cover this space and then I could have just had a little bit of the bellflower peeking here. So that's a little tip from the pro who makes his own mistakes and leads with them. So I hope you enjoy this technique and that you start using burnishing in your own projects.